Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lamott. I am the founder of ChartYourTrade.com and our goal is to inspire millions of hardworking people just like you to take advantage of the stock market. And with this series, we're going to help you out and help you on your journey by talking about how and when to sell your stocks. One of the uh, the major sell rules uh, that we've come across uh, that have been very helpful for holding long-term winners has come straight out of this book here, How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill. And the rule is simply this. If a stock make, breaks out of a, of a solid base and makes a move of 20% or more uh, in under three weeks, then hold that stock for at least eight weeks and uh, you could sell after that time uh, and to look at the technicals. So it sounds pretty straightforward, right? You buy the stock, it breaks out, it runs up 20% and then just hold it for eight weeks no matter what happens and then after eight weeks you reevaluate. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, uh, that, that's what I thought at first uh, when I first read it, but for anybody that, that's uh, read this book and have tried putting it and, and using it themselves, it's, it's not as straightforward as that because sometimes a stock will run up 20%, trigger the rule and then it will roll over and then there'll be other rules that come into play well if it comes back down to your buy point and now you have a loss do you continue to hold or do you sell and which rule you know you end up having all these different conflicting rules and that's where a lot of the confusion comes in so I want to try to to help shed uh, some light on this rule and help make it a little bit less confusing and help share so, some of what, what has helped me out with this rule and how, how I've used it. One of the things that has helped me out is to set priorities for the rules that I'm going to follow. So we have the, this eight week hold rule and the, that's something that's going to help us hold longer term if a stock is a true big winner. But Another rule that takes priority over that is to, one, uh, always, always respect our stop loss, uh, no matter what. So if the stock runs up, it comes down, it triggers a stop loss, that's it, we're, we're done. Yeah, always respect that. Number two is going to be to protect our break-even point. If the stock runs up 20%, we should not allow that stock to turn into a loss. So we want to start raising our stops when we have a significant gain. In, uh, the, in, in this book, well, one of the things that uh, what we see is that from, from a breakout, a stock will typically run anywhere between 20 to 25% if it's going to be successful. And if a stock breaks out and if it rolls over, then there's generally a 78% stop loss. And part of the reason uh, for that, well, when we think about it and we reverse engineer why uh, those numbers of 20 to 25% and 78% is because you, you, what you really are looking for is having a 3 to 1 reward to risk ratio. So if you risk a dollar, you want to be able to make three dollars back. So the numbers uh, work out pretty close to that, right? With a seven to eight percent stop loss uh, and making 20 to 25 percent, you could lose three times and win only once and still break even. So it, so that that's the reason for the three to one reward to risk and the selling at, uh, or starting to think about taking profits at between 20 to 25 percent but the reason for the rule of holding eight weeks if it makes 20 percent in in only three weeks is that those are the kind of stocks that uh, that Bill O'Neill found had the ability to continue running higher so so we want to try to to hold those stocks 
but the, it, it comes well with a lot of strings attached. If that stock starts to, to roll over and uh, we see it like t hitting our break even point, well, part of what, what you know, part of success in the stock market has to, a lot to do with compounding. And it's very difficult to compound if we continuously let our stocks roll all the way back down to our break-even points and uh, even beyond that uh, and back to where we originally placed our stop loss. It's going to make it very difficult to continuously compound. So, so that... So the way to win in the stock market is ultimately going to be by compounding our gains. The way to compound our gains is, yeah, we, we need to have the, these big winners and having uh, gigantic winners uh, of 100, 200, 500% or more is going to help us get there a lot quicker, but cutting losses is just as, if not even more important than having those big gains. You know, uh, because losses work exponentially greater against us than the than having the big winners do you know if we have a loser that's a 50 percent loser then we need a hundred percent gain just to get back to even so it's a lot harder to do that and it's a lot easier to come back from a single digit loss than it is to come back from a double digit loss so we always want to be managing uh, our risk and our stop losses but anyway back to this eight week hold rule and, and some of the other nuances around that so we spoke about managing our stops along the way well, with, with the eight-week hold rule, but what I want to talk about as well is how support can build for some of these uh, stocks that break out and make that, the, that big run, right? So uh, in my own experience, I've seen this work out a lot better for stocks that already have a major support level built in close to that 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 initial breakout point you know so sometimes well when a stock breaks out of a base there's no kind of major support level uh, anywhere near that pivot point and sometimes you get a stock that breaks out and you have the 50-day moving average pretty close to the pivot point and when it breaks out and it has that kind of volume behind it all the moving averages start to, to creep up and get that much higher and you're building additional layers of support as the stock is moving. Those are the kinds of ones where this eight week hold rule tends to work the best because when it rolls down, price is going to be supported at that 50 day moving average. Remember, the 50 day moving average is important to the major institutions. It's a spot that they typically come in and defend their positions. So if the 50-day moving average is already above the price where we bought, then it's far more likely that we'll be able to hold for that eight weeks and not have price roll over and shake us out. Another thing about this eight-week hold rule is that it tends to work a lot better in bull markets than it does in choppy sideways markets and, and definitely doesn't really work too well in bear markets. Sometimes it will, but in general, we want to use this in a strong bull market, kind of like the one that we're in right now in 2017. And the reason why is because most stocks tend to follow the, the overall path of the market. Another way to get this rule working more so in your favor is to be trading a stock in a very hot industry group. So you could see if your industry, if the stock is in an industry group that is one of the top performing ones in the industry right now, uh, if it's kind of a, a lone wolf stock that you know, is kind of bucking the trend of its own industry group uh, and it breaks out and triggers this eight week hold rule, then it has less of a, of a chance, you know, it, it's more of the, the salmon trying to, to swim upstream versus, you know, you being the, the, the fish that's going to swim with the current and, you know, you, the more factors you have working in your favor, the greater of a chance you're going to have to succeed. So that's basically what we're doing. We're trying to line up 
as many things in our favor as we can, and that's going to give us the best probability for success. One of the challenges with the eight-week hold rule, and I've personally experienced this myself early on, is having to know yourself uh, as a trader. And what I mean is, are you somebody that has more of a more of an acclimation to trading uh, longer term, or are you somebody that, that's more of a shorter term kind of a trader, or, or do you have tendencies that, that lend to both? I was somebody that, that had tendencies that, that lended to both. So, well, when a stock would break out and it would trigger this rule, I would uh, take a look at the weekly chart and, and see that, that it's moving up, but then I would see other opportunities coming on to my watch list and then I would see the stock that I'm trying to hold for eight weeks start to roll over and then uh, I would start to, to get a bit, little bit nervous but the rule is in play so uh, so I'll be uh, diligent and I'll uh, you know stick to the rule and then you know sure enough the I would be shaken out of the stock and the other stocks on my watch list would go and be off to the races and I would kick myself for following this rule when my my gut was telling me, hey, sell some of this and and go and move on to the next thing. So we really need to know ourselves as a trader and is this going to be a rule that's going to work for us or against us? As somebody that has tendencies for both uh, short-term swing trading and longer-term uh, and intermediate-term trading, the way that, that I handle it mentally is to have separate accounts that just focus on one strategy. So I'll have an account that, that just focuses on shorter term swing trading. Then I have another account that's for intermediate term trading. And then I have a long term retirement account that, and that, that's just for the, these longer term moves. So having these separate these separate accounts allows me to focus the to have one set of rules for one, one set of rules for the other, and then a third set of rules governing uh, the other one. And that that's something that that has helped psychologically hold for uh, the stock making a, its own move and to keep the rules in check and to not have as much conflict among rules for each account. So the eight week hold rule does work a lot better for over the intermediate and the longer term than it does on the short term. So that, that's something else that you want to be aware of. And one other thing that has helped me with this eight week hold rule is to also use bracketed stops uh, when using the this rule. And so uh, what a bracketed stop is, is having stops at multiple layers so that way you could scale out of a position and it's not just an all or nothing kind of entry or, or exit in the stock. So let's say the stock runs up 20% and it starts to move higher and then it starts to roll over. Well, you don't need to sell everything, but you could start to sell something, right? And then have another stop that's all the way down at your break-even point, or maybe you have uh, a third stop that's kind of in the middle, so that way it, it starts to roll over, you take some off the table, then it, it rolls over a bit more, you take a little bit more off the table, and then you leave that last bit all the way down at the break-even point, so that way at least, you know, if it does turn around and run up, well, then thank goodness you, you held on to something. But if it does continue to roll over and you're stopped out of break even, then thank goodness that you, you sold something up here instead of waiting for the whole thing to just come back in on you. And so psychologically, that's something that has helped me out quite a bit as well. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing kind of game. Uh, you can scale out of positions. Uh, that That's one of the things uh, that I love to do. And that's what I have to say about this eight-week hold rule. I hope that helps you. If you have any questions at all, please leave it in the comment section below and I will personally answer you. Also, take a moment, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that way you make sure that you get all of our updates. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you again very, very soon.